Hello everyone. So today we will discuss about the NERC uh, PRC standard, which is the which are the protection and control mm -hmm. family of a standard. And the first standard that we are going to discuss is NERC uh, this PRC 002-2. And this uh, PRC 002 standard basically deals with the disturbance monitoring and reporting requirement in the system. So we will look into the various aspects uh, of the disturbance monitoring and reporting requirements in the NERC and uh, where it is, how it is applicable means applied to the different users, what kind of recording instruments are required, how it has to be maintained, what should be the criteria for recording, what should be the various technical criteria at the rate at which it should record, what kind of quantities it should be able to record and then we will look how this uh, means uh, why, because these uh, instruments are very much required when there is any kind of uh, chipping or any kind of uh, uh, event in the power system so this is uh, one of the very important uh, standards uh, which uh, helps uh, in improving the reliability of the bps uh, power system basically uh, by analyzing by having those instruments which will help them in analyzing the events and taking the corrective action finding the root cause and then associated action to improve the further the reliability so it is one of the mandatory reliability standard for vps reliability and it sets the requirement for the monitoring and reporting of system determinants within the vps and it's uh, the responsible entities are the planning coordinator or the reliability coordinator as applicable for each interconnections uh, because they have the best wide area view of BES that the and uh, the best determines uh, the BES element for which the these disturbance recording devices is required basically so these are the best responsible entities which uh, will be uh, deciding on the I means uh, various uh, uh, requirements basically for the dynamic data disturbance recording and other equipment basically in the system and further it is applicable to all the transmission owners and the generator owners who are responsible for the monitoring and recording disturbances that occur within their respective facilities so it is applicable to all the substation generating plants owners basically and they need to have the equipment in place in the working condition so that any disturbance that happens within their facilities should be properly recorded for further analysis purpose so the purpose of this standard is to ensure that the system disturbance within the bps are properly monitored recorded and analyzed it should ensure the appropriate corrective action are taken to prevent similar disturbance from occurring in the future means that uh, directly not this standard but the action associated after the event analysis that the corrective action are in place so this uh, particular sprc standard to sets the you know means the pathway for that and further it to promote the reliability of the bps to identify the issues and take action or mitigate those risks because these uh, disturbance monitoring devices will help them in monitoring of any kind of issues in the system so basically this uh, standard specifies the criteria for determining disturbances which must be recorded first to which type of disturbance need to be recorded is to be assured then it requires the facilities to report those disturbance to the appropriate authorities within a specified time frame and then require a specific monitoring instrument and locations where these are mandated for installation for wide coverage further requires facilities to undergo periodic audit and assessment to ensure compliance with the requirement of the standards basically so what is the responsibility that has been provided to the transmission owner and generators owners so the responsibility assigned to them is that if they will be responsible for monitoring and recording disturbances that occur within their respective facilities so whenever there is a fault in a power plant when there is a fault in a 
transmission line, the transmission owner or the power plant owners respectively where the event is happening, if there is an event associated with their equipment, if there is an event not even not associated with their equipment but impacted their in instruments, then also they will be responsible for monitoring and recording such disturbances. And they should also be doing the analysis of those disturbances to find out their root cause and what are the potential impact on the system is there. And then there is a requirement, what are the requirements that is associated with that? The facilities to use appropriate monitoring equipment and analytical tools means that for these to means for, to ensure that they are taking care of their responsibility that they need to have appropriate monitoring equipment and analytical tools available so that they can comply with all applicable laws, guidelines and standards. So the requirement of the standard include disturbance monitoring, then disturbance recording, then disturbance analysis, disturbance reporting and compliance requirements. So this is uh, just a few glimpses on what is covered under disturbance monitoring, what is covered under disturbance recording and other parameters. So you can see that uh, the disturbance monitoring means the the first thing is that the system disturbance including voltage or frequency and relay operation and equipment failure all should be recorded and uh, the standard requires this facilities should be there to use appropriate monitor equipment to ensure that equipment is properly calibrated and maintained so they should have good instruments in place the good facilities should be in place for monitoring of these and these monitoring facilities should able to record such disturbances and those recordings should be properly maintained and they should record in a way that the entire event can be captured and whatever the means it should help in the proper root cause analysis so the standard basically specifies the type of data that must be recorded including event time duration and magnitude then the third part is that the then they should also be able to properly analyze such disturbances and determine the cause and potential effect of the disturbances to identify the appropriate corrective action that is required so this is not basically means this the analysis will be done but mostly it is more covered in the further uh, standards of the prcs like prc 004 and others so what is the disturbance reporting requirement the transmission owner and generator owner must report certain type of disturbance to the appropriate authority within a specified time frame and the report should include the details on disturbance impact what actions is required or what action that has been taken or what are the actions that is required to be taken or planned the standard further specify the type of disturbance that must be reported as well as the reporting requirement and time frames and further the means each of the utility should compliance with the all the requirement and maintain the appropriate record so that they can uh, prove that they have uh, complied with this regulation so what are the different type of disturbance monitoring equipment so first is the transient records that are the fault recorders that is available with the relays or there is a separate fault recorder also for the substation itself so those kind of relay and in earlier days there were you know oscillographs were there then the second is change of a state record which we call as a sequence of events so any event like the digital status is changing like the status of uh, breaker status of isolator operation of any protection those kind of thing then the sequence of event recorder should record those event with a time means uh, proper time stamping then long term records are also there which uh, is uh, because these uh, transient records are for 3 to 5 seconds something Ch change of a state records can be you can say that it only records what is what are the events that is happening like the opening of decker and opening of the isolators but it doesn't record the parameters associated with the system while the long term records basically have this dynamic disturbance recorder or dynamic swing recorder kind of thing so this may the duration may it will be more than one from some minutes to uh, some it can be up to the hours depending upon the requirement of the uh, recorder recording facilities and there is a continuous record like the trend recorder, phaser measurement unit or the SCADA system. Those are the that they continuously record at a specified rate and they have a larger storage capacity. And for that they have more wider visibility basically. 
So these are example of the disturbance monitoring tools. The first one is the fault recorder. So basically, these are devices which capture the high speed data on fault events. And this includes uh, voltage and current waveforms recording, fault location detection, and other relevant information, which type of fault has happened, what is the dip in the voltage, what is the dip in the current. Apart from that, they may record other things like harmonics, and uh, sequence uh, means uh, which relay operated and uh, some digital status also which type of fault initiated all these details it records actual waveform data replicating the system primary voltage and currents then the fault recorder can also be used to identify the cause of system determinants and determine appropriate corrective action this may include the protective relays also means it can be a part of the relay or it can be a standalone fault recorder system for the entire substation can be there then the second is dynamic disturbance recorder which basically records the incident that portray power system behavior during dynamic event such as low frequency zero point means low frequency oscillations and abnormal frequency or voltage excursion then this the third one is that phasor measurement unit these devices provide real-time synchro phasor data that can be used for wide area monitoring and control of the power system so we have discussed this phasor measurement unit in the separate videos you can have a look at that the pmus measures these voltage and current phasor basically they estimate these at a very high accuracy and resolution and you will be able to monitor the angular separation across the power system with the help of the phasor measurement unit data and it can provide you the complete dynamic overview of the entire power system whenever there is a fault whenever there is a disturbance all how the system is behaving how the entire generator to load to everything means how this over entire system dynamic is changing it the phasor measurement unit can provide you those details then there is the fourth one is sequential event recorder the recording which is basically the recording of type sequence data for change in a status only the status of element which may include protection control devices basically the solitaire breaker protection main one main two protection or other protection fifth one is the SCADA system which provides you which is basically the supervisory control and data acquisition system here the data storage rate is slightly slow compared to the, all these fast devices so you can see that it provides real-time monitoring and control of the power system and SCADA can be used to monitor voltage frequency levels and identify deviation from normal operating condition that may indicate disturbances 